when you're dealing with your own emotions, how do you get to that point to be able to get in front of a bunch of men in that clubhouse and and be able to answer the questions that they might have had? How difficult was that for you to be able to be a leader in those moments? It, it was difficult, Gio. I, I, I can't say it was easy. Um, I wanted to be at home. I wanted to be with my wife. I wanted to be, you know, with my in-laws, with my kid, with my dogs. It was comforting, but I wasn't, and I wasn't there at all. And uh, when, when Al Leiter raised his hand and I was giving a little talk about that we are dealing with fear. This is something different than anything we've ever dealt with before. And we have to put it aside so that we could play the silly game that they're asking us to play. Uh, and he said, well, how do you deal with fear? And I was kind of, you know, speechless. And I said, you go to the comfort zone and I want this to be the comfort zone. I want the club, this clubhouse to have us all bond together so that we could do the right thing at the right time. And this is the right thing that we're playing the game of baseball. I didn't know why I thought that, but I thought it as much as I thought anything in my life that we needed to play the game. Oh, yeah. As I mentioned, I mean, personally, for me, it was the one thing that made me feel normal during that time. <laughs> Nothing else did. It was the one thing. Watching you guys play was the only thing that told me it was going to be okay. I, I'm serious. I'm not yeah. just, this is not hyperbole. I, I was searching for something that said, when is this going to be over? What's going to make me feel normal again? And when you guys, especially when you were at Shea Stadium, I mean, that was when you guys came home. And that, that Friday night was a Piazza home run. There was a Saturday game, which you guys won. And then Sunday, I was there. I went to that game Sunday. Unfortunately, it was a Brian Jordan, one of those those yeah, losses. Yeah, he did that a couple of the yeah, times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. I went. And I'll, I'll never, ever. You mentioned the snipers. That's one of the memories that I have looking up and seeing all them on the top of the stadium. It's just mm. stuff that's that's branded into your memory that, that will never go away. Yeah. Did, you, uh, did you ever talk to any of the other head coaches or managers in town about any of this stuff? Yeah, I talked to Herm a little you did. Uh, yeah, exactly yeah, at the time, the you know, Jets, because yeah. Herm was doing what he felt was right, you know, yep. and, and his players said, we're not playing. And, and that was probably the reason that they didn't have any football that weekend. That's right. Because the Jet players said decided. We're not playing. Yeah, just because that's a whole different thing. How are they going to concentrate on their plays? How are they going to get their act together enough to go out there and play, leaving their families 100 strong? So, right. uh, yeah, I talked to Herm. Um, I talked to Joe, of course, right. uh, Joe Torrey. I talked to um, uh, Bobby Cox a lot. Mm. I talked more to Bobby Cox at that uh, prelude to, to September 21st than I talked to him in 15 years, you know. But, yes. you know, there, we needed to have a unified front. That was the other thing that I thought, you know, that, you know, the bad guys were watching. I remember the, the president said, hey, you know, you're going to be in New York. The bad guys watch CNN. They watch our news. They're going to want to see how you how you react, you know, and that was sticking in my mind. And I said to Bobby, I said, hey, how about before the game? We shake hands and and we embrace and we show some unity as arch rivals. And not only did we do it before the game, we did it after the game. The only time in professional baseball that stuff ever happened, yeah. you know. But that was a really cool, surreal moment also. 